What is up, Buck the Goudini in the garage. Today, we're gonna be talking about EVs. If you don't know, EVs are over a hundred years old. The Baker Electric, well over a hundred years ago, they had battery electric vehicles and they've been trying to make them viable ever since and they couldn't. What are the big issues? Battery technology, charging infrastructure. Those are your two big issues with EVs from where I'm looking at them. Now, with the cars themselves, what are some of the problems we're looking at today, right? Why don't people want EVs? Because that's really what we're up against. People don't want these things. Range or charging. Again, kind of what we were just talking about, the whole reason EVs didn't take off 100 years ago. First one is the easiest to talk about, range. Each car has a range. Now, that range is going to be advertised as the most that car could possibly get, just like horsepower numbers. Like back in the 60s, they used to pull horsepower numbers off American V8s. It wouldn't be in a car, it wouldn't be a water pump on it, just letting her go. All right, so what you do when you're coming up with horsepower numbers, just like range numbers, is you put that vehicle in the best possible situation so you get some really good numbers out of her. Problem is when manufacturers get that car and they actually get to driving it and, and seeing what that range is and they're running the numbers on their little calculators there, and they're gonna be a little upset when this is a 350 mile car, but all of a sudden because it's cold out, it's 275. And because they've had the car for five years, the battery's depleted and now they're only getting like 200. That's not great. And it's a reality that manufacturers are trying to ignore that range, who cares, whatever. Just, yeah, it's a 500 mile car. Oh, you got 100? Yeah, who cares, whatever. Consumers are not, they're not ignoring that. All right, and if you ever get, if you bought an EV and got burned on range, then it's gonna be a long time before you buy another EV. Range, not only can manufacturers manipulate what the range is supposed to be, and then when people get the car, a brand new car, it's not doing it. There are other factors, right? Say they don't lie about the range. Say it's a 200 mile car and it goes 200 miles. The problem is it's not gonna do that when it's cold. It's not gonna do that when you have a bunch of weight in the car. It's not gonna do that when that battery gets old. There are a number of other environmental factors that can affect the efficacy and the range of a battery. And that's a problem because that's all you have. Right? If I am getting low on gas because I'm towing something and I'm not gonna get the mileage I thought I was, I pull over to a gas station. I could carry gas with me. I can't carry extra batteries with you. You know what I mean? If I wanted to, I could pull a trailer with 10,000 gallons of gasoline. I'll drive from here to Sacramento. I'm in Jersey if you don't know. I can't do that with EVs and that's a problem for people. I can't mitigate the range. Charging becomes another issue for people. Do you have charging facilities close to you? For most of the country, the answer is no. So you have to charge at home. If you live in a city and there's Tesla things or whatever, that's fine. Way more people have to charge at home. Okay, that's fine, you can charge at home. You don't even have to have a crazy charger 220, any of that stuff. But what you do have to have is a place to charge it. So if you have a garage, I'm scanning in my garage right now, there's two, two, two bays here, I can charge inside, no problem. What if you live in the inner city? and you live on the eighth floor of an apartment. What, you running 20 extension cords out your window? Someone's gonna unplug them. That literally happens. That You hear that all the time. They call them Tesla Karens. People just walk by Tesla's charging and unplug them. And I'm sure they're coming up with locking technology. Now, here is a much bigger issue, and this is not getting discussed. Our infrastructure is not designed for everybody to be charging cars in their garage all night. All right, think about Texas a few years ago. It got a little bit cold and they didn't have power for two weeks. Here in Jersey, this house was built in 1964, this whole area was. Our electrical grid is based on 1964 numbers. God, people had a refrigerator and a bunch of incandescent lights and that was it. There's three adults that live in my house. We each need a car to get to work. I can't charge three cars on this grid. Every time it gets over 90 degrees and my neighbors put their air conditioners on, the whole thing shuts down. Think about Texas a few years ago. It's crazy. Our grid is not in a place. We're all ready. Especially if you live in California, don't get me started. They write letters all the time. Hey, it's gonna be hot this week. Don't put your AC on, otherwise we're all gonna lose power. Now imagine if your car counted on that same grid. If you're a government or an EV uh, manufacturer, just an auto manufacturer trying to keep up with this crap, you're doing everything you can to ignore this. I know you are. It's not a problem you can solve, and I get that. If you're an auto manufacturer, you can't do anything about the grid. So you're just ignoring it, but consumers can't ignore that. Consumers can't ignore that. If you live in Texas and you didn't have power for two weeks because it got a little bit cold, are you buying an electric car and then trusting that same grid to get you to work every day? I, I don't think so. What if you drive far? We live in Jersey, we have family in upstate New York. It's 260 miles. 
we drive 260 miles all winter, about once a month, to go see family. Now, I would probably need a car with like a 350, 400 mile range to make that trip in the type of cold they get right in the middle of New York State. Lake effect cold, negative X cold. I could never take an EV up there. I wouldn't even bother. It'd be, I'd be terrified the whole time just watching that go down. You know what I mean? Now, are there people where all of this is not a factor? You have a great grid, you live in a new development, you got a huge house with lots of possibilities for charging it. You don't care about the range or, or, or whatever has you, your situation works within it, that's fine. But I think it's disingenuous for us to not acknowledge that for most people, range and charging are an issue. At a certain point, you have to listen to your consumers. You can't just march ahead doing whatever you want. I know, I know, here's a, here's a, here's a big problem. Here's a big problem. I was hoping to wait till later in the video. This stuff, we're not being given the choice. And that, that, that's really where the issue here comes. We're not being the, given the choice. We're being told, this is what's coming. Get used to it. In another five to 10, you're not even gonna be able to buy an internal combustion engine, not a new one anyway. All right, governments are mandating, states are mandating. By 2030, by 2035, you cannot buy internal combustion. What? Can't buy it. So you're telling me that in the next five to 10 battery technology and the grids of America are gonna get so much better that a house with three adults and three cars on a 1964 grid, that's not gonna be a problem? What is changing? Are they coming through to redo my grid or something? Is battery technology really gonna go tenfold where you can sell me an affordable 500 mile family minivan type car? Cause we are miles away from that right now. And y'all have been trying for like 20 years or something. And people see this. And that's the problem, right? You see it, you, that's why you're still watching this video. We're almost 10 minutes in now. And you're like, oh man, this, yeah, that's the thing. But if you turn on the TV, it doesn't matter. Fox, CNN, doesn't matter what it is. They're all doing the same thing. Trying to trick you into thinking that A, EVs are the future. B, you can't do anything about it. It is coming. C, your fears are overreactions. And D, if you resist, you're part of the problem. You POS, you climate denying friggin' hick. How dare, how dare you? Doesn't work for me, bud. Doesn't work for me. And I'm a middle of the road. I'm a middle of the aisle kind of guy. Having this stuff crammed down my throat when I can look out there in the world and go, well, that wouldn't work for me, that wouldn't work for me, and that would be catastrophic. I'm off the bus. And if everybody gets off the bus, I mean, you, you can't survive selling Fiskers and Teslas. That's not, that can't be all the EV stuff and Rivians. I see a ton of Rivians now. Rivian must be doing something good because they are everywhere. But the people I see driving them are clearly, this isn't their only car. I work at a marina, so we, I see a lot of people that have disposable income. So yeah, sure, you see Rivians and Teslas pulling in. That's fine. You know what I don't have? <laughs> disposable income to spend on a Rivian. I hear what you're saying, I hear what you're saying. So Rivians and Teslas are luxury cars. They make affordable cars. You can get a Prius. You can get any one of the 40 electric, battery electric, hybrid cars. Chevy's selling, Mopar's going that way. Here's the problem. You go out and you buy a new Chevy EV, right? Okay, good for you, you're awesome. You're saving the planet. Greta's not gonna, how dare you, you now. When you buy that car, do you wanna know what Chevy tells you? Do you, do you want to know the advice that Chevy gives people that just bought a new battery plug-in electric from them? They say, don't, if you charge it at your house, don't charge it inside your garage because it'd be a shame for your car and your garage to burn down. That's right. That's right. The biggest issue with these things, not only is the infrastructure and the battery technology not there, they're not even there on safety. They are so far away on safety, it's horrifying. And what kills me, the reason I'm making this video today is because it's the government's job to protect you from new consumer technology that's not safe enough to be out there on the consumer market yet. And instead of doing that, instead of protecting you, they're leveraging their own legacies on you. They're putting it on your back. No, no, no. I want to be the administration that brought EVs. I saved the world. That's how I go down in the history books. And they're going to burn down your garage to do it. They're going to kill your family on the road to do it. They're going to make you make a horrific financial experience, uh, choice on an unsustainable vehicle that doesn't fit your lifestyle so that they can go down in history as the ones who saved the world. Don't break it happy and save the world. I'm gonna talk about this some more, all right? Car culture. If you are a car guy, you know what's the biggest enemy of car culture. It's the government. Every time something cool comes out or we start doing something cool, for frig's sake, they even outlaw the Carolina squad. I mean, it's dumber than heck, but leave them boys alone. If they wanna drag ass staring up at the coons in the trees, leave them alone. Leave them alone. 
you know the government is the biggest enemy of car culture. Because anytime they look at us and they go, oh, that's not safe. It's not safe. You can't have anything on the road that's not safe. They shut her down. Shut her down. Go down in the squawk boxes. If you're a car guy, I guarantee off without even thinking, you can probably name me three things that you love to do that are now illegal because the government deemed them a little bit too unsafe. If you don't know EV fires, a regular car fire burns at about 1500 degrees. That's because the fuel that it probably ignited the fire burns off quickly and then it's the interior, it's the carpet. They take you know a couple thousand gallons of water to put out. They're out in a few minutes, 1500 degrees, no big deal. EV fires, it's not the interior burning, there's no gas. The chemicals in the battery are burning. It's an electrical fire. You can't put these out. They burn at 5,000 degrees. Firefighters are getting killed and, and maimed and injured trying to fight these fires. Some of them will take 40 or 50,000 gallons of water. There are videos which, if I can find a free use one, I will put it right here, of vehicles underwater and it's bubbling and churning because they're still burning. Because it's not a conventional fire, it's an electric fire. These things will burn for weeks and they don't even have to be in an accident. If you ever had a car that was flooded, like they have all over the southeast of the United States right now, those cars are ticking time bombs. And they don't just burn in the moment. You get flooded and it starts burning. A car that got flooded could spontaneously combust months down the road. And that's because you're picturing one big battery. It's not. It's a million little cells. Not a million. It's a bunch of little cells, hundreds of little cells, all with connections. And those connections get salt water on them or even normal water. And they start to corrode. And now you have short circuits. Right? And that creates excessive resistance, which it creates heat. And over time, it can build up and then the car goes up. Maybe you and your family are in it. Maybe your children are strapped in the back seat of that car when it goes up in flames. Let me give you a minute to think about that one. And instead of the government stepping in and saying, whoa, 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 this battery technology is not there. You need to stop. Figure it out. You can't sell these. They can't be on the road. We're not allowing them in our tunnels. We don't want them, you know, near school buses, whatever have you. But instead of that, instead of that, governments around the globe are just cramming these things down consumers' throats. And they're burning down houses. And they're killing people. And they're ruining lives. This dissonance, this lack of response is terrifying. It's terrifying. I never liked that the government would step in on car culture all the time, but at least it was like, well, they're just trying to keep people safe. You know what I mean? I can't tell you how many things I like to do to cars that are illegal, but I know, I understand why they're illegal, because they're a little unsafe and I shouldn't be allowed on the road with other people, unsuspecting people. You're driving next to me and I got something unsafe on my vehicle. It's not fair that you should be at risk. It's not fair I should be at risk. This car hits me and then spontaneously combusts and I'm rushing to get my kids out of the backseat. I know that's an intense situation, but this is what we're potentially up against. It's the government's job to protect you from this people. And they're not, they're not. But thank God, people are seeing this and they're doing it themselves. Guys like me are coming on here and going, whoa, 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 whoa. You know who's doing a lot of talking and I love it? Uncle Tony, Uncle Tony, <laughs> always good. Always good for one, he's pointing out. And this is the last thing I want to talk about, the last aspect that I really want to talk about. We've talked about the fact that governments are cramming these down our throats to the point where there are mandates. If you want a new car in 10 years, uh, the way things are going right now, it's not going to be an internal combustion engine car. It's going to be a battery electric car. It's the only thing you're going to be able to buy. I really hope they fix the whole catastrophic burning down thing. But if not, oh well, it's your problem. Additionally, the technology is just not there. The range is too sketchy. Anybody see that video? Was it Doug the Mirror? who bought one of the lightning trucks and he got 12 miles a gallon when towing, or 12 miles on a full charge when towing. 12? 12? And you want landscapers and contractors to buy these things? To do work with? I don't think that's gonna work. I think you're gonna have some pretty pissed off people. Buy a $100,000 truck that don't go more than 12? 12, 12, really, 12. Okay, 12. So we talked about all those, right? The range isn't there, the batteries aren't there. The bottom line on all this, what's terrifying to me, well, the government thing is really the most terrifying, but people just don't want them. 
the automakers of the world. It's not one country, it's not us hick Americans. Europe's having this problem, Japan's having this problem, everybody's having this problem. People looked at all these things. They say, well, I can't afford the initial cost of it because EVs are expensive. I can't really afford to charge the thing. I don't have charging infrastructure reliably around me, and I don't love the idea of my children dying in a fiery inferno in the backseat. I don't know, I'm weird like that. So what do they say? I don't want it. I'm not gonna buy an EV. I don't know anybody who's actively looking for an EV. And again, if you're an EV person and you love yours, that's cool, I want you to have it. I don't want it to spontaneously combust and burn down me and my family, but just don't charge it anywhere near my house or my cars and you can do whatever you want with your EVs. I do not care. Paddle your own effing canoe. But you know what, leave me alone to paddle mine. Uh, I'd rather if my canoe didn't have the risk of spontaneously combusting. People don't want these things. The government's mandating the manufacturers to make them. So what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? The governments around the world, this isn't a political video, it's every government. Liberal governments, conservative governments, this kind of government, that kind of government, all the governments mandating this. The auto manufacturers have to do it. They can't not be in compliance, but people aren't going to buy them. So what's gonna happen? You're putting the burden on the manufacturers. You're gonna have a bunch of vehicles that are worthless. They'll probably have to sell them at an insane loss if they can sell them at all. Cause you could give me a brand new Rivian and I wouldn't take it. You could give me a new Cybertruck and I'm gonna whip it for a day. I'm gonna see how far hard I can thrash it out in the woods. And I'm freaking leaving it in the woods. Well, I wanna start a forest fire. I don't know, I'll leave it somewhere. I would drive it into the ocean, but they even burn underwater. <laughs> God, these things are awful. I mean, they're so evil. It's, it's just, It'd be like if in the 1980s, they tried to mandate fuel injection. Imagine if in 1980, imagine if 1980 was the deadline for fuel injection. There was fuel injection before 1980, but it was crap. It was so bad. Uh, it took them until about the mid 1980s to get that figured out. And of course today, it was allowed to progress organically, so to speak. And fuel injection is the only thing, and carburetors went out of style. You don't buy carbureted cars anymore from the dealership. All right, you get fuel injected cars because the technology was allowed to um, progress organically. If they would do that with EVs, maybe it'd be 40 years. I don't know, maybe it'd be 100 years. I don't know, but the, the thing is, until the technology is there, the technology isn't there. <laughs> this is kind of. But in the meantime, we have to keep these things off the road or we have to do something to make them safer, like now. And we haven't even discussed yet the fact that batteries last like 10 years and then it's like, you know, more than the value of the car to replace it. So what we're essentially doing is creating disposable cars. Whereas the cars we were building 50 years ago that polluted are still on the road. People are pulling them out of tree rows, cleaning the car, and getting them running again. These EVs are not gonna be that way. Unless the manufacturers are willing to warranty the batteries and then put a new one in for free, which the manufacturer can't do that. Um, that's another aspect that keeps people from buying these things. It's just, the technology's not there. It's not there, man. It's not there. So let's, let's kill this conversation down in the squat box. Are you losing sleep over these EVs all over the place? Are you looking at one? Maybe you are not, maybe, maybe you don't see things the way I see them and you're saying, no, I'm ready to cash in the fuel injection, go to an EV. Let me know down in the squat box. I'd love to know what you're thinking. Let me know if there are other issues that are keeping you out of an EV. You ever seen one of these EV fires? I've never seen one in person, but I've seen a ton of videos and it's nuts, nuts. And do you agree that I shouldn't have to make this video? government should have done the right thing and protected us. I mean, shoot, I so rarely want them to actually do anything. This is like the one time we needed them to step in, help us protect ourselves from this stupid technology and they're not doing it. That's all there is to it. I hope I didn't turn anybody off. I know, touchy subject. Try to keep it as not political as I could. You let me know down in the squad box. Did I do all right or will you never watch me again? Either way, thanks for watching.